Hello guys, welcome. This is going to be my new channel I'm going to be doing, which is going to be reviews of games, operating systems, tech, all that, because, well, I have got my gaming channel, but I do videos slowly and they're not as frequent as I would like, so I thought I would do this as well because I'm a gamer first, but I'm also a techie person. I love tech and fiddling with things. Every time I found a new Linux distro, I've just gone ahead and installed it because I just love fiddling with stuff. Same with my Android phone, I've done all sorts. So I'm going to start doing reviews and tutorials and all that sort of stuff on this channel, which will be separate from my other channel, and this will be just as frequent as the other, so you'll have more to watch basically. What I'm going to do is review a Linux distribution called Zorin OS, I think that's what it's called. It's made for people who are coming from Windows and don't know much about. Uh, Linux. It's really good because obviously here it just looks like, well, it just looks like Ubuntu because it is based on Ubuntu. Even in the boot up, it says boot Ubuntu and not Zorin OS. I'd can't remember what Ubuntu is. I'd say probably 10.4 or something like that. But it's pretty good. Login screen's the same, but it's still easy to use. You just log in, and obviously. It'll look more like Windows when you're in there. It's GNOME, which is weird because I've never seen a GNOME panel that looks like this before. Dude, well, what's going on? Um, it's hiding itself for some reason. Oh, no. Nice. So this is the desktop. Oh, pretty similar to Windows. You can start menu as well. They've made it exactly the same to Windows except some clicking of things is different. Uh, you've got items in here, it's got a Windows, Windows 7 style taskbar, you've got your things for mounting stuff, check that. You've got your network, volume, there. You've got chat, mail and all that, same as Ubuntu, your time, calendar, and you've got your about me, your sort of status for your chat, and then you've got system settings and that, so it's still got an Ubuntu feel down there, but it's made to feel more like Windows as well. When you get the start menu, you think, oh, well, it's definitely Windows, but there's a few differences. Like, you can't see all the programs down here. Instead, you have to click this little plus here, which you see more, which is kind of awkward. Oh, it's kind of awkward to get the hang of at first. Start menu, sometimes you think, oh, if I click this, will it bring up a sub menu? Yes, it does, but then sometimes it doesn't, like when you click the internet. It will straight open browser usually. So I'll do it right now. It's quite confusing. I think it's you ha if you have just one thing installed or if it can't find anything installed for it, it won't do it. But if I make that default now, it'll probably work. Or not. It's it's good for the layout, but still you get to know things not. Looking at the control center, which is Ubuntu's old control center, which in my opinion was the better one, because the new one, it hasn't really got anything in it, it's probably got like 12 items in it at most. You've got fancy, you've got extra things in here as well, like compas and stuff, which is effects and styling and all that. But you've got your basic stuff, like you can take Windows drivers, if there aren't any for your network card. You can update, firewall, all that stuff, keyboard, displays, that'll be for your graphics drivers and things in there. Got screensavers, all the usual stuff. We've got it split into different sections, easy to get to. So that's Windows. I mean, that's not Windows style, that's still Linux style, but it's still really easy, so Start Menu helps you find things. Looking at the computer, it's simply Nautilus, uh, which is the Linux. Uh, sorry, can't understand this. Which is the Linux file manager. Got updates. Ignore them. You've got it's very similar to Windows File Manager. You've got your CD drive, your file system, and your computer bit. You can go to your home folder. You got music, pictures, documents, and all that. File system is basically going to your C drive, which is the root, basically. And it'll show your other devices in there, like other hard drives, um, other partitions, uh, disks that are inserted, all that sort of stuff. It's really easy to get hang of. Normally, Linux distributions will come with Firefox, so everyone's familiar with that, but uh, this one has come with Chrome, which you can also get on Linux, so again, browser for internet browsers, any Windows user will be fine, because you get Firefox, Opera, and 
uh, Chrome all on it. Chrome is probably the simplest browser, that's probably why they've taken it really. Simply just type things in and it takes you there. So it's a really good one. You've got um, Banshee. This is the, it's a very old, very popular, probably the most second most popular media player for Linux after Rhythmbox. But I think this looks better, in my opinion. It's very similar, it's a sort of mix between iTunes and sort of a Linux style player. You've got music, audiobooks, videos, podcasts, and radio. You've also got lots of stores. You can go on Last FM, you can go on Ubuntu Store, you can go on the Amazon Store, which is basically the equivalent of iTunes, but it's Amazon. So, really good, actually. And of course, you've got internet radio, but it's not picking it up. So, that's that. It's very simple to use. You've got play, pause, you can import things. And if you put things straight into your music folder, it'll import them straight away. So it's really clever. The trash, same as anything. Your stores like items and trash, same as Windows, really. Look at that. What else do we have? Software Center. I, I haven't actually looked at this yet, but I'm guessing, yeah, it's just the same as Ubuntu's. It's very simple to use. To be honest, someone coming from Windows would probably enjoy this feature of Linux, that you can install software straight from it by searching it, looking through categories without having to find them. Unlike Windows, where if you want to find something new, you have to actually look on the internet for and just go browsing through millions of websites on Google, and it's not as fun, really. Here you've got internet, uh, it's simplified again, it's chat, file sharing, mail, and web browsers. In web browsers, you'll have ratings as well, you have Firefox down there, Chrome's already installed. You've got other, you've got lots of web browsers specifically for Linux as well. Opera isn't showing up, but might be just because it hasn't got the right repository for it. You've got themes and tweaks. You can do all sorts. That's for more advanced people as well, and system more advanced things. You've got office programs. LibreOffice is my favorite. I use it on Windows as well. You can install fonts, graphics, different art like for drawing programs, 3D development programs, just viewers for looking at photos, scanning programs, it's all sorts. One thing about Linux that I should point out for Windows users who are not familiar with it at all is that Linux is very driver friendly. It'll come pre-built with lots of drivers for so many different devices such as printers, even components for your, hard, uh, components for your computer, which is different from Windows. Windows needs to find the driver itself. Windows Update is a big step up from Windows XP, where it can find a majority of them online, but more of the smaller devices which no one's heard of, again, you'll need to find drivers for. Linux comes with a sort of, I'll call it a legacy feature, where even if it's a small, cheaper device, it'll work because it's small and it can use the same drivers from something else, probably. Windows can't do that, you still need to find specific drivers for it. So, it's very good. It'll come pre-built with graphics card software, but you can also download the better, the more feature-packed ones from the actual websites. NVIDIA, ATI both have Linux versions of the drivers. It's slightly different to install them on each, uh, each version. Sometimes you have to do a few terminal things, which is quite complex because terminal is more, it's basically the command prompt of Linux. And but the thing is with Linux and Windows, Windows you get complete root access by default if you're the administrator. In this you will have to give yourself root access by typing in sudo. And sudo is basically the command for using root things. So I think it's sudo s. Yes, and then you can log in and then you're root instead of your normal user. So that adds that. Of course I'm running this in a virtual box. It's very similar to Windows, so it's a great transition for someone who wants to move over. Of course, no menu is what this is called, which is the start. This is basically a version of the start menu. Of course, they have different themes as well. So if you're bored, so even if you've come from Windows to this, you're like, oh, I've come from Windows. I'm in Linux now. But well, I'm used to Linux now, and I want to get away from Windows. You can just change the way it looks. You can have different ones, which is okay. And then you need to restart, reload, there you go, you have a different looking one already. They're all laid out differently, so it's very, very fun and easy actually. I don't know where that was, so I can't actually find it. 
Um, system tools, nope. System, nope. Where would it have been? I'm not sure. Not finding it. Oh well. Oops, that means that. <laughs> well, it's a very easy one to use. Of course, I haven't really used no men uh, Zorin a lot. Zorin? Zorin? I don't know really how you say it, but oh well. I haven't used it a lot, but it seems pretty simple in terms of simple usage and stuff. And of course, you can run Windows programs because it comes pre installed with Wine, which is a program which lets you install Windows programs and games on it. It's um, so many games and programs are already compatible with it, and pe there's constantly people out there making more and more compatible. Of course, it has a C drive, which is basically it basically builds a Windows system inside the Linux system. Wine can take a while to start up sometimes, but it's very stable because it's been out for so long already. So it's it's a great thing to do. I think I think you people should really try sort of get the hang of Linux because even if you're not bored of Windows, you're not wanting to get rid of it. If you just want to try something new and experience something else for a change, it's a great thing to do, in my opinion. It's a great thing to do. Just trying to figure out how to <laughs> change the start menu back to normal. I can't figure out how. Uh, that's completely gone from the start or whatever. Um, it's not even showing up in the start menu anymore. So, oh dear. There was, I think, the other button was to get to the sort of start menu uh, settings, but of course that's not showing up anymore. Oh, I'm about to do this. Ah, there we go. Of course, you got different. You got dock style, which would be like a dock. See, it's very different. Now you have to search for things, or you can go to there. It's not as pretty, but it's probably one. Bit. You can theme. Linux as much as you want, so even if you want to change everything, like the taskbar, everything. You can even install new desktop environments, which are very good. There's a Windows style, but different coloured. That's a very sort of messy one. There's a Mac looking one as well, so even if you want to make it look like Mac later on, uh, you can do that. And of course you get Linux distros which try to imitate Mac as much as possible. So if you wanted to make a mix between sort of Windows, Linux and Mac, you can get Mac themes onto a Linux Distro, and then you can install this. You can make a sort of Mac start menu or something. You can do all sorts with Linux. Why is such a great operating system? And the fact it's free and open source, most of them, you can edit them as much as you like. KDE, which I think, yeah, it's basically imitating the KDE menu, which is another desktop environment. GNOME is probably the most popular, in my opinion. And then KDE would come second. Then you've got lightweight ones such as XFCE and um, LXD, I think it is. But you've got all sorts of themes that you can look through, fill about, and change it the way you want. And also, of course, you've got other Zorin OS start menus as well. You've got sort of different kind of Windows start menu, which is it's kind of different. It shows up like that, so it's a different style of it, but they're all really similar in their own ways, and you've got a dark version, which would be more Vista inspired, I guess, because Vista was darker colored. So, you can do all sorts, you know, preferences, which you can change all sorts of settings. I'd suggest reading about them a little before fiddling too much. You can even change the start to a start menu, like Windows XP was. You can have an orb, different orb. You can have different kinds of, you can have GNOME logos. You can have funky looking things there, all to go with the style of the taskbar, which you can also change. Um, put that back. You can change the style of icons as well. Inside it. So, that changes. That's a bit oversized, so let's try something else. Let's try the box, see what that looks like. And there you go, you have the start button now, which I think is actually more nicer looking. So you can do all sorts, really. You can change sound themes and everything, and of course you can change the appearance of your actual system as well. So from appearance, you get themes. 
you get, it even comes with the Mark theme, I didn't know that. It even comes with a Mark theme, you know, it's not the best Mark theme, because it's a customized one, similar to the Mark, which will go with the Mark sort of thing. And you can also install other themes, because it is Ubuntu, and it uses a very simple theme system, and you can make it dark. There you go. There's a dark version for you, which goes in the start menu. So it's very customizable. I'm not sure how long we're recording for, but I think I'll stop this. Because this is basically, it's not an in-depth look at it. It's a sort of simple summary of people want, of my opinion of the best operating system to use coming from Windows. And the reason I'm showing it is because when you search for operating systems in Google for coming from Windows to Linux, first one you'll get is PC Linux OS, which in my opinion is nothing like Windows. It looks just like a normal KDE Linux with nothing extra added. It uses your basic things. This is a heavily edited version of Ubuntu to make it feel like Windows, which is better because that's what we want. Because people will be lost and be like, oh, I'm stuck Windows. This is better for the user, this is better for beginners. A more advanced computer user probably wouldn't be bothered about it being easy to use coming from Windows or anything, but for the beginner who isn't into computers a lot, this is probably the best one to use. Simple shop and start down and all sorts. You can easily integrate chat, all sorts of chat accounts with any Windows. You can use Facebook, Google, Jabber, AOL, IRC, even IRC websites, MSN, Yahoo, all sorts. You can oh phone. You can integrate mail and all sorts as well. So it's a very good, very good program. And I think I will end this here. So. I will see you probably either on my other main channel or I will do another review today, I'm not sure. I might do one review a day, one, two, one or two game videos a day. But I will see you, like and favourite, and if you think I should do more tutorials of games, uh, reviews of games, tutorials of games as well, I'll do all sorts of reviews for all sorts of things such as operating systems. I'll even do gadgets and things like phones and tablets if I can afford to buy them of course. So. If you think you would want to see more, then just let me know, and even if you don't want me to do reviews of things like this, and want me to do reviews of other things, make suggestions, because I'll find things, download them, install them, I'll do whatever you want, and I'll just give you a good video about it. So I will see you then, and I will sign off for now.